Guys, welcome back. MDW coming at you with another action figure review. Sorry it's been such a while, but you know there hasn't really been anything out for me to review. I'm trying to keep my reviews more kind of hot toys, sideshow collectibles based rather than kind of all the other small bits I used to review. But you never know, I might go back to doing that. But usually there's been like a bit of a you know a consistent release wave of all these figures coming out. So we've had a couple of weeks off now. But I've finally got my first DC Hot Toys figure. So let's have a look at him and open him up. It is Batman from the Justice League. <laughs> Guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for this review. So my first Batman that I've got picked up. So I'm quite excited to see what he's like. Um, Batman for me will always be probably Michael Keaton, um, only because, again, the classic, he was Batman when I was a kid. Yeah, I had a bit of Adam West time on the Saturday morning television and stuff like that, which was cool. But yeah, definitely Michael Keaton was the one for me. Um, but yo, know, I say, I think that Ben Affleck did a great job as Batman. I don't know if you guys agree or not, or if you think he was absolutely rubbish, but you know, Christian Bale was okay as Batman, but Affleck really kind of looked more like how I imagined Batman in the comic books. You know, like he's kind of really big built, you know, musty. You see like some of his workouts in um, Batman vs Superman. Uh, you know, he's doing all the tire lifting, all this kind of stuff, you know, and he just, his hench is huge. And that's kind of what I imagine Batman to be like more so in the comic books. Um, you know, persona wise, I think uh, he was all right as Batman. He was a bit too perhaps comic-y sometimes. You know, maybe the old kind of, she with you, I thought she was with you. Yeah. Kind of thing, well, I was a bit like, yeah, with that. Could have been a bit more kind of, grumpy and meaner because I remember in the Justice League cartoon they're trying to get Batman to join them for, for ages he just doesn't want to because he's such a loner but you know you know that side though the figure looks really really good I'll say the box I've opened it up and taken him out already it's quite a heavy figure quite a big bulky a lot of stuff going on in there the box just literally has a picture of Batman on the front with the Justice League in the middle Batman on the side and it's got all the Justice League members down the back and then if you slide this off, it's a slip case one, so just kind of like with the Marvel ones rather than the Star Wars. So it's got the clear packaging. You can see the figure, Justice League logo down there. Just pop that there. And then here's the figure and all its glory. So there's lots going on with him, a lot going on. So take off the clear plastic here. I'm just gonna take him out and have a little quick kind of once over of him before I go into the close-ups with this guy. Okay, so he comes really well packaged. His cape is kind of in a separate compartment in the plastic inner casing, so that's really nice. Took that out, and here he is. There is the figure himself. Really great figure straight away off the bat. Yeah, the likeness is superb. But we're going to have a closer look at this. Like I said, the accessories is crazy amount to get with him. There's loads of different action features, head swaps and face swaps and eye swaps even with him. So let's have a run down the articulation. Let's go and have a closer look at him. Okay guys, here we are, back out of the box, close up, ready to have a look at the Batfleck Batman Justice League figure. So, let's run down the articulation first on this guy. So, just like a lot of the other superhero figures we've seen, he's got this kind of bodysuit on, which is all generally kind of like one piece. Now, it's made of kind of a thick rubber, feels like, especially on Batman. We've seen this on a lot of the Spider-Man figures, Hot Toys figures that I've reviewed recently. Um, now, it does, basically hinder the articulation quite a bit. Um, you know, I mean, with these figures, you're not designed to obviously pose them crazy, you know, loads of jumping stances and bending them massively and keeping them in those positions. And I've noticed a lot more in instruction manuals now these days, they are coming with this warning that do not bend this figure, do not keep in this position, do not go past this degree ankle bending. So they must have had loads of people buy these figures as they're getting more and more popular. And obviously they could have getting them home just going <laughs> and bending them, breaking them and trying to get their money back or whatever. But Batman is no exception. It's a trade-off really with the quality of the outfit and everything, I suppose, with just the actual move, um, maneuverability of the figure. So let's have a little look at the articulation. So the head does not really move at all. So this entire, his top cowl, this here and his head is all one piece, which is removable. You guys can see, bing, off there. So that's pretty much non-existent with any sort of motion at all on that. So that, that just stays there like that. Obviously we know Batman has the classic where he can't really turn his head. So a bit of a amendment, guys, to the actual head movement. So you can actually move his head a little bit. So you see this bit underneath here? You can actually twist this to whatever direction you want and then put the cowl back on again. And he does actually turn his head. So you can pose him like, you know, targeting his gun or throwing stuff or whatever. So I just thought I'd mention that rather than saying, it, you know, the head couldn't move at all. 
Now there is movement in his shoulders, so again the instruction manual you come with tells you pretty much what sort of motion you get out of him. It's probably about as far as you're going to get with that. There is a bicep twist, you guys can see there, but again I wouldn't want to do it too much because it's bending the, the fabric or the rubber kind of material over the body. Then he has got the joint at his elbow. And then there is a little bit of a swivel around his wrist here. So these kind of, uh, his gauntlets are separate pieces. So his hand comes off and then the gauntlets come off. So you can twist the gauntlets round and then the hands spin 360 degrees, rotate around 360 degrees. So you can interchange them with the other hands there. Um, then we've got the torso. So there is no real crunch at all or movement with his torso at all. So you can see there, nothing really at all. And there's not really much of a crunch either. Okay, moving on to the lower part of his body there, so around his groin there. So again, you get a bit of a split that can happen. You can see there the stitching going right away up from his groin there, so you can't really move anything more than that without splitting it. I wouldn't really. There is a little bit of a twist there at the quads, not much again. And then he does have a knee bend. You can probably get it up a little bit, probably higher than that. Again, I wouldn't really recommend it. It's probably a kind of a bend here, yeah, at the crotch. You can do that and then the knee joint if you want to get any sort of movement out of it. That's about as far as I would go with that. Straightens out quite nicely though. Again, the quad turn kind of does his whole leg as well. So you're gonna get a little bit of movement there. Then his boots. So there's two bits to his boots. There is the actual kind of bottom part of the boot and the sole and everything is a separate piece here. So you can swivel, as you can see, you can swivel his boot separately there. And then the actual kind of shin guard there kind of is really kind of stuck with the actual leg armor itself. So that doesn't really move at all. A little bit of movement there but the main movement for his foot is the separate part of the boot itself be careful because this actually came off a couple of times when you're moving him about and everything and i don't want your figure to fall over there is a little bit of movement issues with mine and standing up you guys can see this kind of piece of plastic sculpting here at the top of his boot there this rubs on the bottom of his shin guard so you a lot of the time i find that my figure oops, I'm move that camera my figure doesn't really get kind of a straight static kind of stance on the actual floor he's always got his heel up or down a little bit where these things rub on here so just be aware that he's not the most stable hot toys figure out there so the cape is really well done also it's one of my favorite parts of the figure so it's the same sort of material we've seen recently with a lot of the figures i've reviewed particularly count dooku and you know how much i love that figure there isn't any sort of movement in the cape as in there's no wiring in it so you can't really pose it you know and have it kind of swaying out you know it's just literally like a material that drapes down it's quite a kind of nice heavy material it sits lovely over the figure across his shoulders there all the way down the back it's also got like that kind of wet look across it you guys can see that there picking up nice it's got a weather weathered look but it's almost got a nice wet look and it's also quite frayed at the bottom which i didn't really realize with kind of um ben affleck's batman character i thought his costume was all nice and polished but it does look a bit beat up as well it's pretty much the same cape you would get with kylo ren if you guys any of you got the, the last jedi kylo ren figure so again yeah really well done it fits the figure perfectly so let's have a go and have a closer look guys now at the facial features of batman and the actual overall sculpt i'm really pleased with it i think it looks really really good um I, i'm pretty sure it's a good likeness for Affleck. I mean, obviously it's not his whole face, but they've done a really good job with his eyes and his mouth and jawline and everything. I think it really does look like Batman as I remember him anyway in Justice League. And the eyes are particularly good, I think, well done because there's none of that um, you know, deadpan look that we've seen with some of the figures. It has got a point of focus to it. So, you know, he isn't just kind of staring into nothingness. It's got a bit of the five o'clock shadow around the face. All the skin tones are really, really nice. So yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Paint, uh, sorry, uh, sculpt for the face. The paint application is quite nice as well across the whole figure. So with Batman again, because obviously he wears a dark outfit, it's not really kind of the greatest exciting paint jobs that you'll see on the figures, but they've really done it justice here as it does in the film. He's got the black bat logo across his chest and then the whole figure has got this kind of weathered look to it. You guys can see some of it here. I don't know if you can pick these out. He's got like little kind of dents and nicks in his armor across it and I say just the way the armor's designed it does look a kind of a lot more like lived in set of armor it's got it's got a mottled gray which is nice you know because it picks out the back so you can see loads of different bits and pieces of paint jobs they've been trying to do on it so it's not just kind of one color which is good the, the suit as well I absolutely love as well because it is extremely padded so you guys can see here yeah, you know, the buck has been massively beefed up there with all this padding all over it to make him look ripped. He's got his little six pack there. And he says his biceps are huge, like it is a very big figure. I'll do a comparison at the end compared to perhaps some of the other male figures. 
Um, so let's move down there to have a look at his belt now. So his belt's really nicely done. It's again, gold down color. So it goes with like the rest of the suit. Yeah, it's got the gold and kind of black details around it. Some of the higher bits are picked out with a lighter kind of tr uh, gold color, just for a bit of highlight. But the whole thing looks like it's been dumbed down with some sort of wash. And these are the same things with on the gauntlets here as well, and on his knuckles. Then actually on the gauntlet bit here, the piece of armor, it's of course like a different kind of gunmetal color, again, which has been washed over. And then lastly, the boots. There, I've got the same sort of gold detailing to unify it all together as well. So yeah, like I said, paint job, decent. You know, it looks just movie accurate. Uh, you wouldn't expect anything less from Batman. He's not gonna have a bright, super duper outfit, but, a really, really great job. Now, Batman would not be Batman without his legendary accessories, and this Batman is no exception. He comes with a truckload of stuff. When I took it open the box and I look at it, the figure was big and bulky enough already, but the amount of accessories you get, really, really impressed with it. So we're gonna go through all the accessories now. I'm gonna try and do my best to keep it as quick as I can, guys, because I don't want the video to go on for too long, um, but there is a lot to get through, so I'll quickly do my best. So obviously the hands so he's got a couple of open hands there a couple of closed hands and kind of gripping hands there to use these other weapons that he gets with him so you get plenty of those as always standard hot toys he gets his little gps tracker which is quite cool as well like the bat sonar on it it's really nice it's got like a load of building designs on there with like the gps blip this apparently is magnetized and it will fit on his arm so i'll show you that in a second he has two interchangeable mouthpieces so he's got the one there, he's proper uh, kind of gritting his teeth, which is nice, nice pearly whites there. And then he's got one where he's kind of, I don't know, just like uh, mouth open a little bit. I mean, the one you actually get with the figure is closed all together. So yeah, mouth open. Then you get two pieces of eyes with him as well. So yes, this figure does actually change his eyes out. There's one of the eyes looking one way, and then the eyes looking the other way. Two eyes, great. Then you get the additional head sculpt with him. So you actually get Ben Affleck's head with him as well. There we go. Let's look at the head sculpt. So um, I think that is really good head sculpt. The hair is really well done. He's got the kind of grey little silver fox lines there going down the side with sideburns. Again, the five o'clock shadow, you know, good jawline, everything. I, I think this looks like Affleck, definitely does. Really good idea, uh, really good uh, job sculpting that one. Uh, the only thing I'd say with it is that the eyes suffer from a bit of the, the staring, you know, kind of ghost eyes or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, other than that though, everything else is spot on with it. I think perhaps his little, uh, his chin there could be, chin dimple could be a little bit, you know, more defined, perhaps a bit more bulky around the face. I don't know. But yeah, the, the only thing I've got a problem is the stare with it really. But, you know, it's another head sculpt and it's a pretty good one at that. Then we get one of the really cool guns that the baddies have in the film. I think Billy Batman uses them, I can't remember or not. So when they're fighting Steppenwolf, all the, the kind of henchmen, the little kind of bug things that they have. I know there's, they've got a name, I can't remember at the moment. I'm sure someone can tell me. This is a really excellent addition. The weapon is really weighty, really heavy. It doesn't really have kind of any, you know, it's, it's not like rubbery or anything. It's a really solid accessory. And it's got some great paintwork over it. You guys can see that in the light there as well. Really nice and shiny. It's got some brass in it as well. It's got some silver, it's got some gold, it's got some blue highlights coming from this kind of little piece here and down here and it's got a nice little orange highlight as if the gun's firing up ready to shoot looks really organic nice yeah i wasn't expecting that at all i believe the special edition has a base as well with it with one of the creatures on it so that's cool you can pose batman using the the old shooter on them and then you get another complete accessory kit with batman so then you've got your his grapple gun like the brown stock there is quite cool and then they'll say bolt gun design a bit of wash over it you've got the grapples themselves firing out and obviously one that's pretty fully out straight got the batarangs again that's quite cool we've got some nice little weathered rusty bits on them as well with the metal coloring some grapples there you can have this device here i believe is what you use to change his eyes out with in his mask and then i believe this little device i had to look this up because i couldn't remember him using this in the film uh, it might be at the start of the film possibly but yeah this is uh, one of them kind of sonic disruptor things that fires out something that the the flying creatures don't like or something so he uses it as a weapon in it it might be at the start of the film i haven't watched the film enough to kind of know all the ins and outs of it but there we go there's the accessories that you get with batman you also get a cheeky little instruction manual as well justice league batman 
and this literally tells you about all the accessories and everything that goes on with the figure where they had to change the, the facial expressions how to change the head out and also as well most importantly for you guys out there we want to know the actual capability of the movement of the figure there we go 70 degrees 70 degrees 90 degrees 90 so it tells you all of the arms movement there as well and it says also do not excessively bend the body otherwise the suit will deform now just like all hot toys batman obviously comes with a base to display him on i was really impressed with this base actually um, so here we go there it is what it looks like it is very large um i was quite surprised at that actually it's almost got it's like set on concrete it looks like oh, let me just adjust the camera up so i can get it up there a bit more there we go yeah so there's a design of it there so it's kind of like sitting on this kind of platform which is quite cool again concrete design it's got batman's name at the front of it there and then obviously a massive justice league logo and it's got the hole there obviously which you put the peg in to adjust so the little kind of hooks here so you can put your figure on and display it there we go i'm assuming you get this one with the special edition one and then you get the additional base as well with the creature on it okay so quick video on how to change the head sculpt so i believe this comes off here and then you actually pull this piece off so i'm gonna do this off camera because it's quite a fiddly bit to do so you pull this bit off and then the cape is actually magnetized here at this clasp at the front so that can come off as well don't want to get it off there there we go so the cape can come off i'll be able to do this on camera actually no nope, so i couldn't do that on camera so i had to do it off camera there because i didn't really want to ruin the figure you also get this piece in with the figure as well which i forgot to show you guys so this is the replacement part that you put over batman here when you want to put the Ben Affleck head sculpt on. So I believe this part here sits here, like this, under the suit there. It kind of clicks into place. Go, like that. And then the cape goes back over the top. There we are. I think this just kind of makes it look like, so when you put the Affleck head sculpt in, it doesn't really look out of place. I think it kind of realigns the figure a little bit. Phew. Okay, after doing that, I'm back, guys. That is quite a stressful experience, so, um, I think if you're going to do that, please, please be careful because there is a lot of kind of heavy pulling there you have to do and everything because the figure is literally very tough and stiff all the way around the joints there. But there we go, there it is with his head sculpt in. Right, so have a look at a couple of the other action features. So, head comes off. We have got the mouthpieces, they're magnetized. You guys can see that's really funny. Coming off there, and then you can just put the choice back in. Okay guys, lastly I'll show you how to do the eyes. Now, this is literally, if, you, if you're not used to doing this sort of thing, it is a heart attack waiting to happen. So I've taken off his mouthpiece here just because it kept on falling out. But you have to literally make sure you read the instructions for this because, yo, know, I can see this could potentially damage your figure if it doesn't go right or you might think you're doing it wrong and you just never get to change the eyes out and it's just a feature that you miss out on. I'd be quite happy with that if I didn't have to do this every single time. So you guys can see the magnet there, that's for his mouth there. And it's very hard to explain because obviously you can't really see anything with my light being so bad. Let me try and see if I can get the light over it so you guys can see down into it there. Okay, yeah, you guys can see down there, so there's a lot going on there. So I'll just literally try and keep it in layman's terms here. So you've got this little device comes with it the instruction manual tell you how to do this so you literally pick the eyes that you want so these are the two eyes there that look in one way and look in the other so i think i'm going to try and just put back the original ones that he had which are these ones here and he's literally put this clip that in like that and then this literally just goes back into the head and then you push it into the socket very gently where his eyes go again this absolute nightmare <laughs> To remove the eyes out of the figure, I believe you just literally put this into the figure again up into his head here and grab hold of the, the eye piece like this. So it's sitting there facing outwards like that. I believe you grab hold of it like that and you twist it, as the instructions say, left to up or right to down, and then it literally should click and come out. But be very careful. <laughs> So thanks for watching my 1-6 scale Hot Toys Ben Affleck Batman from Justice League review. 
You'll see some of the pictures at the end um, compared to Luke Skywalker from Return of the Jedi. And this figure is really big. He's really bulky. He's got a bit of a higher price point. You're going to talk about kind of 70, 80 quid more. So you need 300 for him. But I think he's definitely worth it. The figure is huge. Very big, very bulky. Loads of accessories, loads of action features, eye swap, head swap. You know, the cape is really nice. The costume is really well done. I think it is just a great figure. My only gripe really is the standing issue mine just does not really stand up at all he's kind of a bit top heavy and the suit doesn't really allow him to kind of stand by himself without the aid of, of the actual stand that comes in the box but you know that is a minor gripe really so if you prefer the ben affleck batman or you like the more traditional style batman coming up from the arkham games which is kind of bigger built then this is a definite pickup for you He's starting to hit shelves now, and he's on eBay. Uh, so, yeah, guys, I, I definitely think if you're like a comic book fan, DC fan, definitely worth adding to the collection. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I've got another couple of reviews coming soon. I believe I've got the new War Machine figure coming in the next week or so for review for that. I'm really looking forward to that massive like die-cast figure, high price points. So I'm really looking forward to getting my greasy mitts on that. But thanks for watching again, everybody. I really appreciate all your support. And remember, keep collecting those action figures. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Find MDW on Facebook and Instagram now at MDW underscore toys.